If you're someone who wastes a lot of time, or maybe you're just not productive enough, maybe you don't get enough done, and maybe you're just overthinking, procrastinating, or don't know how to make a plan, then this video is for you because in this video, I'm going to show you seven ways in which you can save your time, make more time, and create more with your time. Let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that you're good at multitasking? Now studies show that only 2% of the world's population is good at multitasking. And researchers say that when people hear this, they assume that they belong to the 2%. Maybe you're sitting there at home thinking the same. But the truth is most of us belong to the 98%. And in that case, what we need to do is called single tasking or monotasking. Now in monotasking, we need to focus on one single task at a time. This may sound counterintuitive. A lot of people say that if we do less things, it will take more time. But that is not true. Because when you are focusing on one thing at one time, it not only improves or increases your productivity and efficiency, but also your fatigue level goes down and your stress level goes down at the same time. So now next time when you found yourself lost in the battle of doing loads of different things at the same time, press pause, take a step back, take a deep breath and focus on one thing at a time. This applies to driving, eating or texting, speaking on the phone or a Zoom call. Just focus on that one thing. Recently, I read a study that changed the way I live. You can't be creative and logical at the same time. Your brain and mind uses different faculties and different abilities to perform different type of tasks. Now imagine that you're in a meeting all day discussing about numbers, data and analytics. But all of a sudden you're asked to be creative. Maybe you're asked to give a speech or prepare a presentation. So you will find it very, very difficult to switch from one side of your brain to the other side of your brain in a matter of seconds. So with very little organizing and planning, what you're doing throughout the day is your brain is swinging like a pendulum from one side of the brain to the other side of the brain. So in order to avoid this problem, what I do is that I write a to-do list first thing in the morning where I write all the tasks that I have for the day. And then I categorize each of these tasks into logical or creative. So if there's a task that requires me to focus more or which is largely structured and requires a step-by-step -step process, I categorize it as a logical activity. And if there's another task that requires me to do brainstorming or that requires me to feel free and be expressive, then I categorize it as a creative task. So once I've categorized all my tasks in the to-do list as creative or focused task, then I also need to have a time estimate that it will require for me to finish that task. So I will also write down the time estimate uh, just beside the list. And once I have uh, and once I have done that, I can plot my week in such a way where I can have maybe Mondays as creative days and Tuesdays as logical days, etc. Or maybe I can divide my uh, day in such a way where I can have. Uh, creative mornings and logical afternoons or logical mornings and creative evenings and this is how I can plan my day. So once you've planned your day or your week in such a way how it helps is that once you're working on something you are completely immersed and focused in that work your brain is not swinging from one side of the brain to the other side of the brain and this automatically helps you to be more productive and efficient. So this might be unpopular opinion, but I live by this and it has been a game changer in my world. If it's not in your calendar, it won't get done. So make sure that you plan out your day in your calendar. You may use Google Calendar for this purpose and make sure that you put in each and every task that you have scheduled for the day, be it having your breakfast or doing your workout, having your different meals or even your sleep time and also your free time. You can block some of the time as your free time in your calendar. This is a very effective way of planning your day. Now how it helps is 
that it helps you prioritize your personal and professional commitments and it helps you see both of them in the same place. Apart from this, it also gives you reminders, a 10 minute reminder before an upcoming task or a 15 minutes reminder before an upcoming task and that ensures you to actually go on and do that task. It ensures you to getting more things done in a day. So make sure that you put all the things in your Google Calendar uh, because when you have a schedule, you get the context of how you feel about a particular task. You are able to manage your mental health and um, well-being a million times better and you get more done in less time. Tell me how many times you've experienced this. You check everything off your to-do list, but you still feel unfulfilled. You've used your time wisely, you've accomplished every task that you wanted to, but still at the end of the day when your head hits the pillow, you feel you've failed and you haven't quite achieved something. Now I've noticed that this happens to a lot of top performers and this happens because they're not asking themselves this question that what do I need to do today to make today a good day. Now you don't think that today is a good day because you've done everything you wanted to do. You think today is a good day because you actually feel that today has been a good day. And for that to happen, you need to ask this question, what is that one task that I can do to make today a good day? The task that will have the most impact in your life, the task that will help you get more successful, the task that will genuinely make you happy, the task that needs to be your main priority. Now this has also been discussed by Brian Tracy in his book, Eat the Frog, where he talks about the one most important task, the main priority task that he calls the frog and how you need to finish that task first thing in the morning, first thing in the day. And that is how he calls eat the frog, eat the most important task of your day right in the morning so that you feel fulfilled throughout the day so that you don't have that guilt uh, so that it does not make you feel that you need to accomplish 10 things in today's time. So make sure that you break your to-do list into that one single task that is your main priority and try to accomplish that the first thing in the morning to make your day a good day. How many of you feel that the months are passing by? Half of the year has passed and you haven't quite achieved the things that you wanted to for this year. Now this happens because you don't have clear goals, targets and tasks. So what I do is that I have one big monthly goal and then I have four weekly targets and one daily task. So the one daily task is a baby step to achieve my four weekly targets and the four weekly targets lead to the one big monthly goal. So now this has been a very, very beneficial technique. So you might feel overwhelmed by looking at that one big monthly goal, but when once you break it down into four weekly targets and then figure out one daily task that you need to do in order to achieve that big monthly task, it becomes very manageable once you break them down into different chunks. So what you're exactly doing is that you are doing one daily task every single day in order to achieve a big monthly task. So by following this, what you've done is that you've completely disconstructed an unachievable and impossible idea into something simple and manageable. It is very rightly said that location has energy and time has memory. So when you do something at the same place and at the same time every day, that space builds an, an energy and that time builds a memory. Now, what does that mean? So now if you have meditated at a place for a considerable amount of time, that place builds a meditative energy and a frequency around it and it makes it easier for you to do that activity in that place. And at the same time, if you followed an activity at the uh, same time repeatedly, it becomes easier for you to remember that your mind and your brain remember that activity and it becomes easier for you to follow it at that particular time. So make sure that you design your environment in such a way where you have different activities to be performed at different places and you have scheduled your activity in, a such, in such a way that you repeat it at the same time every day. 
Now the problem that we face or the challenge that we face today is that we eat where we're supposed to sleep, we sleep where we're supposed to work and we work where you're supposed to eat. So make sure that you do not follow that and you have a dedicated place for, for every task and that will help you build an energy and frequency around it and it will help you memorize it which will make it more effective to perform. A lot of people think sleep is a waste of time. I don't. Getting good quality sleep is integral for getting more of the time you have when you're awake. So getting 8 hours of sleep is very important for you to perform better mentally and physically when you're awake. Also one of the things that I would like to mention over here is that it is very important to sleep before midnight. It is very powerful and it is very critical to the HGH which is the human growth hormone to be activated. So make sure that you sleep at 9 p.m. or 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. but any time before midnight so you get that uh, window of one hour or two hour to get your HGH to be activated. So make sure that you're getting good quality sleep so that you're more productive and efficient with your time when you're awake and make sure that you don't fall into that trap with the habit to believe that you should be sleeping less to do more with your time. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you found something useful in today's video. So make sure that you hit that like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you another week in a new video. Until then, goodbye.